So what are light waves? Light waves are actually transverse waves that do not need a medium in order to transfer energy from one place to another. Um, you see that uh, with, with transverse waves, they, they uh, vibrate perpendicular to the direction that the energy goes. Now most waves that we talk about, we, they need a medium in order to transfer from one place to another, like sound. Sound has to have air in order for, to transfer that energy. But light is one of those that actually does not need a medium in order to transfer uh, between um, from one place to another. It's, it's, one of, it's very unique of all the waves that it doesn't need a medium. They get passed through a vacuum. Uh, it, the brightness refers to how much amplitude the, uh, the light wave has. So we talked about how um, loudness for sound talks, uh, is, uh, refers to the amplitude, and that's where the energy is. The energy is in that amplitude. Now something unique about light waves is they actually have energy in their frequency as well. A color also corresponds to frequency, um, just like pitch corresponds to frequency for sound, color corresponds to frequency. So if we take the entire electromagnetic spectrum, it's actually a part of a larger spectrum. We go all the way down here from uh, for broadcast band. This is like your radio waves and your uh, television, uh, digital television that uh, that goes through the air. And then you got your radar, your microwaves. Those are all low frequency, high, uh, very long wavelengths. And then you got your infrared range here. So this corresponds to long wavelengths with a small frequency over here. And then we get increase our frequency. Then we finally get to the visible range. The visible range is uh, is of course the Roy G. Biv, and then we get above that is ultraviolet, and even a higher frequency right above that we got uh, X-rays, and then gamma rays and cosmic rays. Now the interesting thing is the um, the amplitude corresponds to how much energy a light wave has, just like all other waves. But the um, unique thing about light is that the frequency corresponds to how much energy it has as well. So these waves down here, broadband and radio, those have very, very low energy. But as you move up, you actually start getting into things that have higher energy. You may have even heard that ultraviolet, like in uh, uh, suntan boots, are very, are, can be harmful and cause skin cancer. Same with x-rays, gamma rays, and cosmic rays. And that's because they have a lot of energy, while the lower end, the uh, radar and radio, uh, we don't really worry about that because it doesn't have a lot of energy that it stores up. Now, along with the uh, the electromagnetic spectrum, you see that we have a short. Uh, the short wavelengths are over here on the right, and the long wavelengths are over here on the left. Uh, and then we have frequency. The high uh, frequency is on the right, and the low frequency is on the left. And because frequency corresponds to energy, uh, low frequency means low energy, and a high frequency means a high energy. So this is our eye, and this is how uh, our eye works. Our eye essentially has two different types of chemicals in the eye, uh, two different types of cells. Uh, one is the rod, and the other is a cone. Uh, the rod, the purpose of the rod is basically to be able to detect the amount of intensity, so the brightness that uh, that light is when it comes in. And because uh, because it only detects brightness, then it only uh, you only see black and white from your uh, from your rods. But as we mentioned before, the frequency also has um, also has energy and these cones that's what they do is, it, is there are three different chemicals one that correspond that will react according to green light one that will react according to red light and one that will react according to blue light which is why those are the, going to be your three primary colors uh, and when a blue light comes in and reacts with the chemical in here it sends electrical impulses up the optic nerve and that's where your brain perceives blue and that's basically how all the colors work. And then uh, your your rods also send in information up your uh, optic nerve in order for your brain to perceive color and a vision. Well, how have scientists determined the speed of light? Well, Galileo was one of the first scientists to actually try to ter to determine the speed of light. Uh, basically, what he did is he sat he stood on a hill and then he had his assistant stand on a hill a couple miles away, and he had a lantern and he would raise he would open the door of that lantern and then he had his assistant open the door of his lantern and then Galileo would see the light coming back from his assistant. Uh, so he would take that distance between the two hills and he would take uh, the time that it would take between the two hills in order to determine the speed of light. Well, when Galileo did the experiment, essentially what happened is it seemed like his assistant opened his door almost instantaneously right as Galileo opened, um, opened his to show, the, to show the light across. Now, Galileo came up with basically two, um, two, possible, two possibilities of, of light at that point. He said that either light moves instantaneously from one place to another or that light moves so fast that there was no way for him to determine. Now Galileo, his measuring device for, for time was, was a little crude. The way that he measured time was using his resting pulse and that definitely was not um, enough, a very accurate measurement of time in order to determine the speed of light.
The next way was uh, the moon of, of Jupiter called Io. And basically what happened here is you had astronomers who were looking at the moon of Io that would come out of uh, the Jupiter's um, shadow when the, the sun would shine on Jupiter and its shadow would be behind it and the, the moon of Io would come out behind it. Well, when we were on the same side of our orbit as Jupiter, Io would come out from Jupiter's shadow at the, at the time that we expect. But then when we were on the opposite side of our orbit from Jupiter, Io would come out with what would seem to be later than we would expect. The astronomers that were looking at this, they came up with the conclusion that the difference in time was due to the speed of light, light taking time to go from one side of our orbit to the other. So they, they took a, a measurement of, of what the diameter of our, our radius of, of orbit was around the, around the sun, and then they took that time delay between when they expected the moon of, of Io to come out from Jupiter to when it actually did. They took that distance divided by time, they came up with the speed of light, and it was actually a pretty accurate uh, way of determining the speed of light. Currently what we do is we use standing waves and, and interference uh, and basically use um, the distance that we have when, when interfering two waves in order to determine the wavelength and the frequency and then we multiply wavelength and frequency in order to determine the speed of a wave. Now we discussed earlier the three primary colors. The three colors that our eyes can see are red, blue, and green. And that's because we have three chemicals in our eyes, the three cones in our eyes that can that can see those colors that basically chemically chemically react according to those colors. But you've been told in your probably in your art class that red, blue, and yellow are the three primary colors. So why why this different? This difference. Well, the reason is because we're talking about visible light, and pigments are slightly different. And uh, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit. But the visible light, the three primary colors, is red, blue, and green. We so here we have our, our example. We got uh, red, blue, and green mixed together. When red and green mixed together, it comes up with yellow. Green and blue mixed together to come up with cyan. And red and blue mixed together to give magenta all three of them mixed together to give white. So for pigments, the three primary colors are a little bit different. They're magenta, cyan, and yellow. And if you remember from the previous slide, the, um, the secondary colors, when I mix the primary colors together, the secondary colors were magenta, cyan, and yellow. And that's because pigments, what they do is they actually absorb light and then reflect what's left over. So magenta and cyan, they look, in pigments, they look a lot like um, red and blue. So they're called red and blue, but in fact they're not red and blue, they're magenta and cyan. And yellow is going to be the third primary color of pigments. Visible light, they trans uh, visible light transmits the colors while the pigment pigments absorb the colors and then reflect what's left over. So let's take this diagram right here. This is um, this kind of shows what happens. The pr three primary colors of pigments, we've got magenta, cyan, and yellow. And then the three primary colors of visible light is red, blue, and green. So if I have a pigment that is magenta, for example, the reason it's magenta is because it absorbs the green light and it reflects the red and blue. If I have a pigment that's red, the reason it's red is because it absorbs the blue and green and it reflects the red. If I got something that reflects everything, doesn't absorb anything, then it reflects all three, then it's, it's going to be white light. If I got something that absorbs all three colors but reflects nothing, then that's going to be black. So let's take magenta. We take magenta and it absorbs green. And then we take green and add that to magenta. We mix these two together. Uh, green's going to absorb red and blue. So what is it going to reflect? Well, if it, if it absorbs the green, red, and blue all together, then that means it has nothing to reflect, which means it's going to be black. This is a little picture that I did. Um, I, I took some magenta paint and some green paint and I put them together and you can kind of see here that that's black uh, when I put those together. These are acrylic paint, uh, uh, paints. And this right here, this magenta, that can be mistaken for red. If you look at that, it kind of looks red and it could easily be mistaken for red. And that's, that's mainly why the three primary colors of pigments are referred to as quote unquote red and blue. And then the third color is, is obviously going to be yellow because red and magenta look a lot alike in pigments and then blue and cyan look a lot alike in pigments. But you take magenta and green, since magenta absorbs green and then green absorbs red and blue, put them together, absorbs everything, you're going to get black out of it. 
So I took a picture of these three ink cartridges from our library. And you can see the color ink cartridges that we have yellow from this ink cartridge. We got magenta from this ink cartridge, and we got cyan from this ink cartridge. And basically all the colors that can be made, that can be printed out, come from these three colors. Now let's say, for example, I want a red. If I want red, basically if I take magenta and yellow and I add them together, well, magenta is going to absorb green, and then yellow is going to absorb blue. Magenta is going to reflect red and blue, but the yellow absorbs the blue and reflects red and green, but magenta absorbs the green. So both of these are going to reflect red. So if I mix them together, that's where you get your red from. And then you could do the same with the yellow and the and the blue, and, and, and that will reflect uh, green, and then your blue and red will reflect, uh, I'm sorry, your cyan and red, that, or cyan magenta, that, that will reflect your blue out of that. So this is how you get your primary colors. Um, these are the three primary colors, and this is how you get your secondary colors from each one of these ink cartridges by mixing those together.